Okay, everybody, welcome back to part two of the Medieval Tavern. This project's been going swimmingly so far. So let's get right into it. Gluing on the roof panels. Pretty simple, not much to explain there. A little hot glue. Bingo bango. She's on the roof. little bit of glue wipage there all right so here comes a little bit of fun stuff these here are the outcroppings or the added extra bedrooms that the tavern owner decided to put on thought yeah let's get a little bit extra money two rooms we'll put them on the outside of the building <laughs> so anyway this is gonna be a couple of bedrooms just gonna glue them, hot glue them on the side of the building there. And these are gonna look really cool. Show you what I'm doing up here in a little bit. Add a little bit of roof material. Now you're gonna see a little bit of a difference later on in the video. I didn't quite think it through at this time, but uh, I glued this piece on. And after I decided that it would look way better if the roof actually kind of came out a little bit more on the side. So you're going to see a little bit of a difference there later in the video. I didn't want to try to show that footage and explain it as well. But that's uh, when you notice it, that's what happened there. I just wanted it to look a little bit, a little bit better. So adding the roof onto the other one. I'm really glad I added these. These look really cool. So, use some of the bricks for the lower part, and I wanted it to look different. So, I added bricks to these. It turned out really well, and my goodness, it looks great. There you go, there you can see the pieces that I added onto the roofs there. But anyway, there's the brickwork all done. Looks pretty sick. This is going to become the siding for the side of the building. I used a wire brush to kind of texture these. I, I, I didn't use my trademark tweezers because this was so thin that it would just cut right through it. So that's why I used the uh, wire brush on it. So a little bit of tacky glue and started laying the siding on the side of the building. This turned out really good. Quite easy to do. Of course, when you have a thousand of these things, <laughs> it goes pretty quick. And I also make sure, and I, I did not want this to look really, really perfect. So there's some crooked pieces in there, there's some chipped pieces, broken pieces, but as you can see here, it actually turned out really well. There's a little bit of a contrast between the brickwork and the siding. And I think it looks great. I'm actually surprised with this build. This build is taking me quite a long time. Now this, I thought this was interesting. I decided to do an experiment. You know, some suggestions were given to me that my shingles on my projects, they, they look a little bit too uniform. They look a little bit too nice. So the suggestion was try to make it a little bit more random and a little bit not as nice. So I was like, okay, take that advice and I'm going to do that. So what I did here is I thought, okay, I'm going to try to make a template for shingles. So I took some balsa wood, drew out a design that I thought looked kind of cool, and then used an exacto blade and cut out the template. Now. You can buy these 
you know, with uh, laser cut MDF, I decided, you know what, why not just try to make my own, see if it works. So just uh, smoothing the edges there with a file. And there you go. That's what it looks like. It actually turned out pretty cool. So all I did with this afterward is I just taped it on to uh, some XPS foam. It held really well. And then just went to the hot wire cutter and started going with the template. It, it, it did stick in a few places. I'd probably have to smooth out the edges just a little bit more. But overall, this thing actually worked pretty well. But I think I might make a few more of these. Just pretty simple, you know, they're not gonna be perfect, but it definitely did the job and it definitely did what I wanted it to do. So there you can see the piece that I uh, just cut up. And we're gonna use the hot wire cutter to cut some really thin strips for these shingles. And it didn't take too long, I gotta say, it was actually pretty quick to do all of this. And there you can see the, the finished product. I had quite a few. I all, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, overestimate anything that you need. Just make more than you think you're gonna need. And boy, does that ever save time, I tell ya. <laughs> so anyway, lots of tacky glue on the roof surface. Stuff dries pretty quick. Actually, it sets up pretty quick. So you kind of want to have a thicker layer of glue on there. So then, taking the piece of shingle and just laying it on. Matching it up with the edge of the roof. Laying it on. Pretty much it. After that, you want to put a little strip of glue on the upper part of that shingle you just laid down so that the next one will stick. The lower part will stick to the upper part. And that seems to work out really well for me. So, so just making sure that the, uh, the shingles are mismatched to give it a really rough look. And man, this turned out really cool. Look at that quite happy with how it turned out. Really rough looking, definitely not uniform. Exactly what I wanted to, wanted to accomplish on this. So as you can see from the other side, the shingles were textured, and this is what I used to do that. I just taped a bunch of toothpicks together. They're actually longer cocktail sticks. And then I just went to work on the shingles. And I did not be gentle with this. I went quite rough because I wanted the edge of the shingles to break off, to show even more wear. So uh, as I said, I did not go gentle on this and it was perfect. It turned out really, really well. So moving on after that, cut a piece of foam or a ridge beam. And again, distressed this quite a bit. I wanted it to look very warm. So using the edge of the blade there, just chipping away at it, I did a couple of cuts and it really, really looks worn. And as far as the shingles go, I did the same technique here. I've already made and ready to go. So I used all those toothpicks that I taped up together and I just went to work on it. I wanted some nice, deep grain on this ridge beam. Wanted it to look really, really good. So I went quite deep with it and it turned out amazing. So the next step after that is just to hot glue it to the top of the roof. Lay down a, a bead of hot glue, put on that ridge beam and really, really finishes off the top of this, this project. There it is. Looks great. You can see I also textured the end 
of the ridge beam. Wanted to make sure that that had the look of really, really deeply scored wood. So moving on, cutting out the windows for these overhanging bedrooms. So after they were cut out, I just made some window frames from XPS foam, added some wood grain on those as well. And then I had some cut up frosted plastic sheets. So a little bit of tacky glue on there. And then I used the frosted sheet, glued it on, and there's a window. Now this is gonna turn out pretty cool when it's put in. It's gonna let light through, but it's not gonna be see-through. And these are gonna go on the outcropping bedrooms. So these are your cheap, cheap rooms. They don't get really interesting windows. They just get your boring <laughs> style window. So just install it with some tacky glue and it was a nice tight fit. Looks pretty good. So next we have a feature window at the very top of the structure. Now again with these clear sheets that I have, I just printed out some simple stained glass pictures onto these sheets. Tacky glued it to the back side of the window and that's going to look really really cool. So the next thing I did is I'm going to make a stone arch for the doorway. And this is just another piece of XPS foam that uh, I textured, put, made some grooves in it so it looks like individual stones, glued it on there. I made a door there. You can see the wood grain on the door. And now this is the bottom section so you can see that I also made more windows and I put that stained glass plastic on these bottom windows here. This is the tavern part of the whole thing. So I put those windows in there because I think that looked really good. And I also did the floor in a stone texture. Now moving on to the top part, you can see that I added that window with the stained glass. Added the wood beams all over the, the sides of it. There's the windows for there. All the shingles were textured and you can see I did some, some wood repairs on the roof. I don't know if you can notice, but all the siding there, I did nail holes in all the siding and boy did that ever turn out really cool. So anyway guys, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you come back for the last part and I'm gonna leave you now with a little bit of a teaser. Have a good one guys, talk to you soon.